Hey, I'm Dave from Power Probe. And I'm the other Dave from Power Probe. We brought out the new draw monitor and we've had a lot of questions about specifically how it works. So today we're gonna to go through a couple of more detailed explanations of the tool and how it connects. Dave, what are we gonna get into? So this is a tool we've got that's gonna make your parasitic draw drain testing simple, quick, and easy. Um, we've got a couple of things here. First one we're gonna start on this 2004 GMC Yukon, which definitely has a battery drain. The battery will go dead if it sits for a week or two. So we're gonna go step-by-step step through the parasitic drain diagnostic process. After that, I'm sure you'll be asking, it's great on a 20 year old vehicle, but what does it do on something more modern? So we have a two year old Volkswagen we're gonna jump on after this one. So you can see it in action on that too. Check it out. So when using the power probe draw monitor, this is gonna to connect to the car's DLC and supply power to the vehicle and give you that current draw reading. Now, you could use traditional methods using a, a normal multimeter and wiring it between the battery and the battery cable, but that can be sometimes difficult without losing a connection. For example, this side post battery, if you see, it's gonna be nearly impossible for me to keep the meter connected to the battery and the cable while I'm disconnecting it. So I'm gonna lose power at some point and possibly reset my problem. Using the power probe draw monitor, I'm gonna have continuous power. This will supply power before I disconnect the battery, so there'll be no interruption in power. You're not gonna reset anything. All right, so we're gonna connect the draw monitor to the car's DLC. And you should immediately get a voltage reading when you first plug it in. That is your battery voltage, the vehicle's battery voltage. And if you don't have a reading at this point, that means the fuse to the power port on this connector is probably blown and that needs to be fixed first. So make sure you do have a voltage read from the car's battery. Um, then you're, go, you're ready to go ahead and hit the smart output button. Now this tool is gonna supply power to the vehicle. Um, it's zero right now. You may see some current reading at this point, even before you've disconnected the vehicle's battery. And let me turn smart output out. It depends on what the vehicle's battery voltage is. Right now, the vehicle's battery is 12.6 and my output voltage is 12.6. So they match, there's gonna be no current flow. But if your vehicle's battery was low, for example, 11.8 volts, it's gonna wanna draw a little bit of current at this point. So you may see a current reading before you've disconnected the battery, but that's not gonna be an accurate reading. For the readings to be accurate, the vehicle's battery must be disconnected. All right, draw monitor's connected, smart output's on. I'm gonna close the vehicle up. Got the window down so I can still get to it. Lock the car. Then we'll go out and disconnect the vehicle's battery. All right, we'll disconnect the battery, negative battery cable in this case. Get it out of the way. And now if you look at the draw monitor, there's our live draw reading. It looks like everything's starting to settle down. We're down at about 69 milliamps. Still a little bit high. And it's bouncing up to in the 80s. So although it's a small drain, that is higher than specifications. So that we're gonna to move to our next step of locating the circuit that has the actual drain. All right, you may want to, when you're tracking down your drain and being able to watch your monitor settings, if you're pulling fuses or whatever, uh, this may be, your fuse box may be farther away than this displays. So we also have a Bluetooth link and the Power Probe Link app. You can connect this draw monitor to it and you can get your readings remotely anywhere you need to on the vehicle now. Okay, so we're gonna start at the main fuse box. Now the old school method, most technicians would typically start pulling fuses one at a time and seeing if their draw dropped. You could still do that, but not recommend it anymore. Just pulling the fuse and plugging it back in could reset the system, could reset your problem. <coughs> so the newer technique is to actually take a digital voltmeter, 
You set it in a millivolt range, a low range, and you connect your two probe tips across each fuse. If you have a zero reading like we do here, let me get you a light. If you have a zero reading like we do here, uh, that means there is no current across that fuse. That is not an active circuit. That's not your problem. But you can go around all the fuses. And at some point you may find one that is not a zero. Oh, like this one here. So I know this is an active fuse. There's some current going across this fuse. Now this measures 0.3 millivolts and we have fuse charts that can convert this millivolt reading to an actual current reading depending on the type and size of fuse that are available for download on our website. Now one thing to note when using the power probe draw monitor, it's coming through the OBD2 fuse or normally is a cigarette lighter fuse. So when you're voltage drop testing your fuses, you may find one. I believe it's this one here. Yep, that's an active fuse, but that is the one for my OBD2 port power. Do not confuse this as an active circuit drawing power because it's got power coming through the vehicle from the power probe draw monitor, it's coming through that fuse. So that fuse is particularly power going into the vehicle. So if you, if the fuse you see that is active is the one that goes to the cigarette lighter and or OBD2 port, ignore that one as far as that's not your draw. Now we've identified this fuse as the only other fuse in here that is an active fuse. And if I look at the fuse panel, it looks like it is for the HVAC control unit. So we're going to do a little, a little more further diagnosis. We'll pull up some, some schematics and see what's on that circuit. And we'll go from there. All right. And I'd like to point out a couple things going on on the screen. You see this little alert symbol with the 40 milliamps next to, next to it. That is a setting you can set here in the settings menu. So you can set that alert to go off anywhere from 40 milliamps. I believe it's up to nine amps. Which you better never have a drain that high, but, <laughs> but so you can set that at whatever is a desirable cutoff limit for the vehicle you're working on. Go back to your main menu. That alert will be on if, if the amp draw of the vehicle is above that amount. And you also have min max settings here on the side to be able to reset those. You simply go to the menu and go right back. Another important tip on here in the settings menu. There is an automatic power off feature. I believe it defaults to 10 minutes. In real world use, you probably do not ever want this thing to shut off. So turn it to offsetting before you're, especially if you're doing long-term monitoring. And then go back to your main menu. So we have disconnected and unplugged the AC control unit. And you can see our drain has dropped to a much more acceptable level. There's probably a little more further diagnosis we got to dig into there to see exactly what's causing that head unit to cause that drain. It should be shutting down like any other module, but we've pretty much identified the problem at this point. Now let's go from this Yukon and we'll go to a 20 year newer car. <laughs> All right, this car we're working on is late model 2022 Volkswagen Atlas, but same way we'll plug into the vehicle's OBD2 port. I've got a good voltage reading, so I've got a good connection to the vehicle's battery. But notice this battery is a little lower. You're not up at 12.6 volts. So when I hit smart output, this is gonna wanna put some current into the vehicle's battery. So I'm gonna get a current reading, but that is not my parasitic draw reading at this point until I disconnect the vehicle's battery. And the vehicle's battery is now disconnected. Okay, now you can see this is the live parasitic drain of this vehicle. It's gonna start really high. Um, we're probably gonna to have to give it a few minutes for all the modules to shut down and settle down. So we'll come back in a few minutes and see what our true draw reading is. Another tip uh, to know when you're parasitic drain testing, especially on late model vehicles that have the keyless proximity type keys, you need to make sure the key 
remote is away from the vehicle or just being close can wake up modules and give you a false reading. Okay, so you can see the total drain on this vehicle. Once everything, all the modules have settled in, and gone to sleep, we're bouncing around between like 10 and 20 milliamps, but well below the 50 milliamp threshold most manufacturers recommend. There you go, the new PP Draw Draw Monitor from PowerProbe. You can check out more at powerprobe.com.